Good morning, people of God. Welcome to our online service this morning. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. With that gratitude in mind, let us celebrate this holy Sabbath day and praise the Lord and worship God. Let us begin with an opening hymn, If Thou But Suffer God to Guide Thee, Hymnal number 142.
As we are gathered here to worship the Lord, let us bring all that we are to God so that we might experience his touch upon all aspects of our lives. Let us pray together. Awesome God, when you created the world, your intention was to create the kingdom of heaven on earth. Our world should be a beautiful place with countless treasures all over the places according to your will. However, we often lose the sight to see the valuable things because our minds are in the wrong places. Frequently, we don't see the treasures because they look too small and worthless and we ignore them. Lord, help us to have the spiritual gift of discernment to distinguish the difference between the things with worth and worthless. Even in our lives, we tend to find the kingdom of heaven outside of our hearts and do not look for the real joy and happiness deep inside of our souls. We confess that we are easily distracted and often lured into pursuits that are unworthy of our deepest devotion. Lord, help us to reset our priorities according to your will and truly look for a heavenly relationship with you first. Turn our hearts once again to desire that which is holy, good, and true for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us have a moment of a silent meditation and a prayer. Hear the words of assurance. This is God's acceptable time of forgiveness and healing. Even before we sinned, God provided for us a way of restoration and renewal. Live, then, as a free people who celebrate God's mercy and reach out to others in the name of Christ who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's anthem, Creating God, Your Fingers Trace, will be dedicated by Rex and Deborah Endelin. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Deborah and Rex. Today's children's message will be delivered by Alyssa Shoneman. Alyssa? Hi, folks. It's Miss Alyssa here. I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying the summer to the best of your abilities. Now, even though I haven't been able to see many of you children and many of my secondary students, I've actually tried to connect with some of my secondary Sunday school students through Zoom. Many of you probably know what Zoom is. If you are interested, if you are one of my secondary students and have not yet come and joined us, then definitely try to talk to your parents, talk to the uh, faculty here at Sunday School uh, or the church, and let them know that you want to be part of our Zoom sessions at home at 1 o'clock on Sundays. We would love to have you. We've already had four people, and we want more to come and join us on our weekly chats. Now, today's children's message is about diversity. Perhaps you've heard of diversity before, but do you know what it means? Now, let me tell you. Diversity is all about having people of all different colors, countries of origin, language, abilities, genders, orientations, and more. Now, for example, I am disabled. Now, I don't look like every teacher that you might have had. I was born with dwarfism. It means my bones are smaller. Now, Jesus, for example, he was from the Middle East. You might not be able to see his picture, but he looks different than me, definitely. And I think that's okay. Jesus understood and embraced diversity when he was spreading the word of God. He made us all in God's image, but yet when we look around us, we see that everyone does not look the same. How is that possible? Well, God made us in his image, in our heart, and in our spirit. It is what is on the inside. Let me show you a bit about what I mean by using something that you may enjoy. Here I have a red m and m And then I have here a green m and m Now, you can't really see if I cut it on the screen, but when you cut both the green and the red m and m they look the same from the inside. That's the exact same thing as people. We all look the same on the inside. Miss Tammy had a children's message in June, all about how some people have not been treated the same because of the color of their skin. And it's true, and it's sad. I cannot deny that I have been not treated differently because of my height and my disability. But my Jesus went out to his community and spread the word of God, even when those who are in power want to silence him. We can use our voice to be an ally to those who are not treated fairly. As God's children, we know that he loves everybody and that everyone should be treated the same. Some people have to be reminded of that. Now let us pray. God, we ask you to give us strength, strength to stand up for what is right, to understand that not everybody is treated fairly in this world. But with your guidance and love, we can be the messengers of good news, that God loves all of his children, no matter their gender, their race, their ability, their orientation, or where they come from. Amen. Thank you, Alyssa, for your inspiring message for our beautiful children. Thank you. It's time for us to share the joys and lift up our concerns and prayers. I have a couple of big joys to share. Warren and Carolyn Ferry celebrated their 55th 
wedding anniversary passed to Thursday, July 23rd. Wow, 55th anniversary. Congratulations. We pray for you and bless you for your everlasting happiness together. Praise the Lord. Carol Dukas finished her radiation treatment last Friday. That means she is now cancer free. Thanks be to God. But let us still continue to pray for Carol. And the concerns um, Jerry June will start meeting three different doctors and will begin the treatment for his prostate cancer. And please continue to pray for Jerry and his wife, Diane. Please remember Ilona Toraka in your prayers for her complete healing. And also, her mother, Eileen Toraka, is under great stress these days. And I am very concerned about her health as well. So please remember Ilona and Eileen Toraka in your prayers. Well, George Dukas ex experiences a shortness of breath uh, these days. Hopefully, it's nothing serious, uh, but let's keep George in uh, our prayers as well. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, Please hear our humble intercession for all races and families on earth that you will turn all hearts to yourself. Please remove from our minds hatred, prejudice, and contempt. Help us also to depart from everything that divides us. O oh God, as we are in danger and fear of catching the coronaviruses, and fighting for the equal human rights these days. Help us to see and assert your will. May leaders of our country and the world be led by your wisdom and discernment. Lord, look graciously upon this world. O oh God of compassion, thank you for being there for our fellow human beings who are suffering physically emotionally, spiritually, and financially. We trust your continual presence in their lives. We pray for all people, especially people who are still working behind the scenes, unsung heroes, frontliners, police, and essential workers. As we are going through the dark age of the modern history these days, we continue to ask for your encouragement support, and guidance. Lord, we depend on you, count on you, and believe in you. Oh God, please lead us with your undying love and unending hopes. We pray all these in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's lecture is Bill Otto, and he will read the scripture lessons for today. Bill? Good morning. Please join me with today's scripture lessons. The, the epistle is Romans 8, 26 to 28, and 38 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Now today's gospel is Matthew 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in the branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now please join us in singing our next hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, in our hymnal number 110.
morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It has been so hot these days. How have you been in the middle of this heat wave? I've heard the weather reporter saying that it's going to be so hot and humid again for the next few days. But friends, I needed to bring up a hot topic of our Christian belief, the kingdom of God, on this hot day. There might be a good reason that today's lectionary readings talk about this hot topic in these hot days. Are you ready to listen up? Let me begin with the terms kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. Are they different or same? Sometimes we hear kingdom of God and other times we hear kingdom of heaven like today's Matthew gospel described. According to biblical scholars, they mean the same thing and they are interchangeable. In the ancient Israel, good Jewish people considered that the name of God was so sacred and they were not even worthy to pronounce God's holy name. So they substitute God's name with something else, such as Adonai, El Shaddai, Jehovah, and Yahweh. We assume that is the reason that Matthew, a gospel writer who particularly was writing for a Jewish audience, was afraid to use kingdom of God in order not to violate the sacredness of God's name. So instead, he chose to use kingdom of heaven. According to Matthew's gospel today, Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like these five things. It is like a mustard seed. It's also like yeast. Here's another way of looking at it. It's like treasure in a field. It's also like the expensive pearl. Finally, it's like a fishing net. Let's look at each one a little closer. You know how tiny a mustard seed is. However, it grows into a very large bush, large enough for birds to build their nest among its branches. What is Jesus saying here? He is saying, God is at work, even though our human eyes often fail to perceive what is happening. We are living in a society and culture where we emphasize bigness and the visible things and ignore the small, minor, invisible things. Just to look at the current culture and situation. We didn't know the tiny invisible coronaviruses could stop the whole world. We thought that it's nothing, but it caused the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have ignored the small voices of the women and the ethnic minorities for too long a time, and now it has exploded as the Me Too movement and the Black Lives Matter movement. We often overlook the tiny seed problems that are at the root of so many of these difficult situations. The second metaphor of the kingdom of heaven is yeast. Its meaning is similar to the previous one, a mustard seed. Yeast is a small and virtually invisible, but it yields an astounding produce much larger than itself. As you might know, my brother owns a bagel shop in Nassau County. Every morning around 2 a.m., a professional baker starts baking the bagels in the big oven. However, in order to bake them, he has to make dough a couple of days prior. 
I've witnessed a few times how to make dough in the huge machine with all kinds of different ingredients. One ingredient he cannot omit is yeast. Yeast is the most important ingredient to raise dough to make the beautiful bagels. The power of yeast is really amazing. Dough without yeast is heavy, thick, inert, and tasteless, like matzah, Jewish unleavened flatbread. Just like that, yeast as the kingdom of heaven is a changing agent. It causes expansion, development, and movement. Thirdly, this parable talks about the treasure in a field and an expensive pearl. Obviously, there was no bolted safe in the first century AD, so it was not uncommon in the ancient time for someone who had valuable, precious treasures to bury them in the ground. In today's gospel, Jesus' parable says that someone has found a treasure in a field accidentally. What is he going to do? He buys the field so he can legally claim the treasure in the field as his own. However, the purchase of a priceless pearl is a different matter. In this case, the pearl is not discovered accidentally, but it was discovered by someone who is intentionally shopping for precious gems and jewels. When, we, when he found this incredible pearl and knowing its value, he sold off everything he owns to buy it. The point here is that the kingdom of heaven is more precious than anything in the whole world and one gives up everything to possess it. Finally, this parable talks about a fishing net as the kingdom of heaven. When the fishermen pull the net up on the shore, they sort the fish out, take the good ones, but throw out the bad ones. It implies the final judgment days. The kingdom of God is not just a present reality, but also an inevitable future. This eschatological dimension of the kingdom of God reminds us that the chaps will be separated from the wheat and the evil will be separated from the righteous at the end. Jesus is seriously and urgently talking about the kingdom of God in his many parables. Why? Because it is so very important. If we put the teachings of the kingdom of heaven in his parables together, we come up with the good lessons. First of all, Jesus is reminding us that there are some things in life that are priceless. Therefore, we should constantly take care of them, keep our eyes on them, and protect them before anything happens to them. For example, what's the price for our health? Even though we own the whole world, if we lose our health, our wealth is of no use and has no value. My family is learning that the hard way these days as my mother and my brother have to go through dialysis to survive. How much would you take for your children? How about your family? How much would you take for your good, clear mind? See, Many of us do not realize the important things in life until we lose them. There are some things priceless. Our life is one of them, 
Our family is another. Our health is another. But most important is our soul. Our soul. If we have missed out on the kingdom of heaven, we have missed out on the one thing in life whose value exceeds all others. We don't constantly think about this matter of God's kingdom until it hits us in hard ways. Even worse, sadly, even though God's kingdom matter hits us hard, at some point in our lives, many people still don't realize the importance of it, ignore the signs of danger, and keep moving to the dead end with a hardened heart. Let's wake up. Friends, if it is true that the kingdom of heaven is worth more than everything else we own, we should put all we have and invest all we have in there. Don't hang on to your stuff. Those will vanish sooner or later. Let God control your life. We miss so much in life because we refuse to turn over complete control of our lives to God. We are living in the world of the most advanced technology. It seems as though we are invincible, but still we cannot even control the tiny invisible viruses. We have wealth to live in the richest country in the world, but we still cannot control overflowing homeless people and hungry children. However, don't ignore these seemingly tiny issues, but give more attention to them. God will control the world through our behaviors and actions. God will use us as the instruments of his kingdom. Let's give our heart to God. Let's give our soul to expand the kingdom of God on earth. Remember that we will never find the abundant life that God offers us until we put ourselves completely under his control. Friends, does God control your life? Where do you invest your spiritual wealth? Where is the kingdom of heaven in your life? Look for it. We have to reestablish the kingdom of heaven in our lives as soon as possible before it's too late, before it's too late to save. Whoever has ears, please listen up now and do something with your life for the kingdom of heaven. Really, seriously, the sooner the better. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, Hallelujah, What a Savior. Hymnal number 165. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior, bearing shame and scoffing rude. Can it be? Hallelujah, what a Savior! Lifted up was He to die, it is finished was His cry. Now in heaven exalted high, hallelujah, what a Savior! When He comes our glorious King, all is ransomed. Hallelujah! 
pray. People of God, we have been called and now we are sent. Sent into a future that is sure because it is God's future, even though we do not know where we are going. Go with courage and faith. May our heart be filled deeper than we could ever imagine with the fullness of the kingdom of heaven in our heart. Go in peace and spread the kingdom of God with your words and actions. Amen. Let me make a few announcements. Next Sunday, August 2nd, is a communion Sunday, so you know what to prepare for your communion table at home, and uh, please uh, prepare the elements, bread or crackers, or grape juice or wine. So uh, please be prepared. Our food pantry needs the following items, canned goods such as tuna, chicken, black beans, soup, chicken and beef broth, and boxed milk, decaf, instant coffee, tea bags, facial tissue, paper towels, bath soap, shampoo, toothpaste, and toothbrush. Now, Rex has an auction update, and Rex? Thank you, Pastor Constance. Good morning. Auction September 12th, less than two months away. Please go to the website and check out the catalog, see what wonderful things are there, and then get your pledges in. Uh, nothing will be auctioned unless it's on the website, on the catalog. Um, I would like you to take a look at this beautiful item that's come in. It's a brown and white genuine English ironstone jug. Uh, it's a, with a copy of uh, Sh Charlotte, uh, engraving, uh, from original engravings from 1830. Uh, beautiful piece of memorabilia. Uh, I hope you like it. I'm sure others will like it too. I can't wait to see what you bring in. Thank you. Thank you, Rex. For more auction information, go to our church website, www.umclr.com. Scroll down to the bottom right and click on 2020 Grand Fall Auction. Get the latest catalog update and view some of the donated items to be auctioned on Saturday, September 12th at 12 noon. Now, I would like to introduce a special message for our congregation and friends from Deborah Shield, chairperson of our church council. Deborah? Thank you, Constance. Good morning, everyone. As you know, we had a council meeting on July 14th. At that time, I presented several options for our sanctuary floor. After a discussion, a vote was taken. The option chosen was sand the wood floor under the carpet and underlayment and have it polyurethaned. Then add a center aisle carpet. Minimum cost was $5,700. Well, the wood floor is okay, but not as pristine as we had hoped. The cost of repairing certain sections was very high. So since we had the go-ahead for a wood floor with carpet, that is what we will have. The old pine floor is a great base for a new hardwood floor. Lowe's, Home Depot, and Lumber Liquidators were checked out. The best price was Lumber Liquidators. Oak, pre-stained, and pre-finished for the sanctuary and chapel was less than the $5,700 for the refinishing job. A group of our talented members are willing to do the labor of installing the new oak floor. It comes with a 30-year limited warranty. Once it is in, we can then shop for the carpet center aisle and have it installed. We have a good start to our floor carpet fund. Still have a long way to go, 
So please keep those checks coming in and making those donations. The task force handed in our compliance certification report to the New York Annual Con Conference. They made a request for additional information that we are supplying to them. The rumor is that most churches have had to submit their report several times. We hope this is the last one for us. Thanks and have a great week. If you wish to contribute to our Sanctuary Floor Fund, please send your donations to UMCLR Floor Fund, 792 Hawkins Avenue, Lake Grove, New York, 11755. If you have any questions or comments about our church reopening, please email us at COVID, C-O-V-I-D, at umclr.com, or call the church office at 631-588-5856. My beloved congregation, time flies. Today is the last Sunday in July, and I will meet you in August next week. Until we meet again, please take good care of yourselves. Always be careful and stay healthy and safe. Shalom to you. Goodbye.